I'd like to call to order the uh, Cuyahoga County Regular Cuyahoga County Council Regular Meeting for Tuesday, June the 14th, 2014, the first meeting of the year. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Calling the roll, Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Brady. Here. Mr. Germana. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Schron. Here. Ms. Conwell. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is absent at the moment. Ms. Simon. Here. Mr. Greenspan. Here. And Ms. Conley. Here. There is a quorum. And please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, for a moment of silence, I'd like to reflect on the passing of Mr. Arnold Pinckney, who was uh, a, certainly a leader in this community and who was involved in many segments, uh, served many years on the school board and advisor to many elected officials. And I also note the passing of Joan King, who most of you probably didn't know, but she was a city prosecutor and a magistrate in uh, Cleveland Municipal Court. And she was a very young woman who succumbed to Alzheimer's yesterday. And um, mm -hmm. she'd been a dedicated public service, and I'd like to note her passing also. Mm -hmm. Item five is comments related to the agenda. Did anyone sign in? Madam Chair, no one has signed in to speak. All right, the minutes from the regular meeting of December the 10th, 2013 are in your packet. If everyone has had an opportunity to review those uh, minutes, we can entertain a motion to adopt them as circulated. So moved. Second. All right, moved by Mr. Schron and seconded by Mr. Germana. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it, the minutes are adopted. Um, i just like to note um, um, this, this evening and wish a very, very special goodbye to Matt Robino. Where is Matt Robino? Here. Uh, from our Office of Budget Management. He is leaving the county to our chagrin to become the finance director of the city of Shaker Heights, which is in District 9. Um, their gain is certainly our loss. Um, I know I spoke to the, to the mayor um, and, and commended him for his excellent selection. So your last day is the 24th. Um, he's been the director of um, budget of office and management for four years, and prior to that he served the county in the budget office um, for over a decade. Um, Matt has helped this council a great deal. I mean, he was always available to answer questions for us. Uh, I don't think we would have gotten through the budgets without him. So without a doubt, uh, Matt has always been here for the best interests of the county, and we certainly will miss him. And, we truly appreciate his hard work and dedication um, uh, on behalf of the council and for all the citizens of Cahoe County. We'd like to thank you and, and wish you Godspeed. And I think Mr. Miller also wanted to make some comments. I, I just would add my uh, sincere thanks for all the close cooperation and the assistance that, that you've given the, uh, the, county, the council and the county. And I, I think that uh, uh, You've truly been a model of professionalism, and, and uh, whatever uh, whatever has come up, you've uh, you've just taken it in stride, and just uh, always worked motivated by nothing but the uh, the best interests of, of the county, and and uh, it, it's uh, it's truly been a pleasure to work with you, and 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 I think that our. Uh, our new co county government would not be uh, nearly as far along as, as we are if it weren't for your efforts. It, you, you've truly made a great difference for, for us and for all the people of our community. So uh, th thank you very much and best wishes for future success. All right. Um, do we have any messages from our county executive? Just uh, quite briefly, uh, Madam President, I want to echo your comments about uh, um, Arnold Pinkney, he was, a, he was a legend and a giant in civic affairs for many, many years. His services are, are this Saturday, I think, at uh, Saturday morning at uh, Olivet, and uh, uh, we'll be sitting, submitting something officially on behalf of uh, the county um, in, in his, uh, his, his uh, memory. Uh, also just wanted to inform the council um, officially, uh, the state of the county address this year will be on February the 19th. 
at noon with the city club it, with in partnership with the city club as usual and this year it will be at our uh, new convention center so I invite your uh, your attendance and participation there and that's all I have thank you uh, item 9 consideration of a resolution of council for first reading and adoption under suspension of the rules we can entertain a motion um, pursuant to rule 9d and 12a to suspend the rules motion to suspend the rules second moved by mr gallagher and seconded by mr germana any discussion all those in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. and the ayes have it the rules are suspended madam clerk madam chair i'd like to recognize that mr rogers has joined the meeting Resolution number 2014-0001, a resolution approving the appointment of Thomas Kolaluka to serve on the Cuyahoga County Personnel Review Commission for an unexpired term ending March 7th, 2015, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Moved by Ms. Conwell and seconded by Mr. Germana. Ms. Uh, Conwell, I think you wanted to be heard on this. Yes, Madam Chair. An opening occurred uh, in, in the PRC on November 15th, 2013, with approximately 15 months left in the appointed term. And due to uh, recently voted charter amendments, County Council assumed the responsibility for appointing the PRC uh, commissioners. Um, because the PRC had been operating with a vacancy in the three-member uh, commission for approximately two months, there is a need to be expedient in filling this uh, position. Although the commission is still technically operating with a quorum in the event of an illness or even a tie between the two uh, remaining commissioners, the third member of the commission is needed in order to ensure that the important work of the commission continues uh, uninterrupted. And uh, we did have a little incident when it was vacation time that this did occur. So this is a, a main reason that we need to move this process forward. The next uh, commission meeting also occurs before our next regular uh, meeting. And so I request that this appointment be approved on first reading under suspension of the rules. We did go through a process, uh, council staff as well as me, and we opened it up to any of uh, my colleagues that wanted to drop in on the um, uh, the interview process, there were some outstanding candidates that were uh, sent in their resume to be a part of this process, and it came down to a total of three, and we vetted those three out with uh, the uh, administrator, Rebecca Kaminsky, not participating as far as the scoring, but to share some background history on what the commission is doing so far and where they plan on going. So in the nominee that we have, uh, we feel that he will bring that expertise as far as what, where the direction the PRC is going now. So I would um, ask that my, all my colleagues vote and support this. Thank and you. I think, do you want to tell us a little bit? I think he has a background in this field or? Uh, he does have some background with the two areas that we're planning on moving forward with the civil service testing as well as uh, pay the pay equity ordinance. And um, Mr. Thomas Kaluka has some extensive background in this area. And I believe he also was uh, had worked on some uh, SP, what is it called, SPHR, the Professional Personnel Review Commission. So on both sides of the table, he has some extensive background. Okay, any questions or comments? All right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And Mr. Kyle Luca here, we congratulate him on his appointment. All right, item 10, consideration of resolution of council for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2014-0002, a resolution determining to submit to the electors the question of levying an extension of the alcohol and cigarette excise taxes for the purpose of paying the costs of constructing, renovating, improving, or repairing sports facilities and reimbursing a county for costs incurred by the county in the construction of sports facilities. Um, this matter is referred to the Committee of the Whole, and I thank Mr. Jones for introducing it. Um, we have at the um, end of the um, agenda this evening um, some dates for, for meetings um, 
for Committee of the Whole. This is certainly a very, very important issue. We would appreciate um, comments from the public and encourage people from the public and whoever has interest to come in and state their position or email us or, or give us any information because um, we want to hear all sides of this. This is a very, very important decision that we have to make and we will um, refer it to the committee and have the, uh, have the necessary public hearings and the committee meetings and then make a decision based on that information. All right, next item. Resolution number 2014-0003, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Jason J. Therian to serve on the Cuyahoga County Community Improvement Corporation Board of Trustees for the term January 1, 2014 through January 1, 2017, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This goes to Human Resources. Resolution number 2014-0004, a resolution confirming the county executive's reappointment of Diane Fusco to serve on the Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities for the term February 1, 2014 through January 31, 2018, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, this may refer to uh, Human Resources. Resolution number 2014-0005, a resolution approving a revised assigned council fee schedule for the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas General Division and 8th District Court of Appeals, effective February 1, 2014, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Um, this matter will go to Public Safety and Justice Affairs. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor. Item 11, consideration of an ordinance of council for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2014-0001, an ordinance amending sections 407.01 and 407.15 of the Cuyahoga County Code to add a definition for nominee and to prohibit nominees from making political contributions to nominating or appointing authorities and public officials from accepting same from their nominees and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. Uh, this matter is referred to Council Operations Committee. Item 12, consideration of resolutions for first reading adoption under suspension of the rules. These items um, require a motion pursuant to Rule 9D and 12A to suspend the rules. Mr. Gallagher. I'm sorry, um, this is only for 007 only? Yes. Okay. Motion to suspend the rule. Second. I moved and seconded, and all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution number 2014-0006, a resolution amending the 2012-2013 biannual operating budget for 2013 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations from the general fund and other funding sources and for appropriation transfers between budget accounts in order to meet the budgetary needs of various county departments, offices, and agencies related to year-end closeout activities in accordance with resolution number 2013-0227 and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, Mr. Miller has asked that this matter be referred to the Finance and Budget Committee. Resolution number 2014-0007, a resolution amending the 2014-2015 biannual operating budget for 2014 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations from the general fund and other funding sources for appropriation transfers between budget accounts and for cash transfers between budgetary funds in order to meet the budgetary needs of various county departments, offices, and agencies and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to that. Moved by Mr. Miller and seconded by Ms. Conwell. Did you want to be heard on this, Mr. Miller? Madam President, my colleagues, this resolution is mostly routine with appropriation of grants and closeout of grants. There are two significant items. One is the uh, additional $493,000 for the jail kitchen project to deal with some unexpected issues, primarily foundation problems. And the second item is uh, $360,000 in funding for the uh, fire damper inspection program, uh, which follows on the uh, outstanding leadership that Councilman Gallagher has provided on this issue in his committee. I ask for your approval. 
All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, Madam President. Yes, Mr. I, Chair. I have a question. This Thanks, may be Madam. Mr. Rubino. He's not getting off the hook that early. Um, just out of curiosity, may I ask him a question directly? Yes, go ahead. One, is that, is that one question? The three parts. <laughs> the, uh, the, the first, the, there are two items referred to here as the funding is, funding is from a future debt issuance. Yes. Can you just explain those, exp what that means? This uh, touches upon what we discussed in finance committee yesterday. The county anticipates doing a short-term um, note issuance to fund capital improvements through this year. So those are the proceeds we're referring to. And so those items. The, the immediate cash will come out of the reserves? Um, temporarily, okay. but we will have, by year end, we'll have proceeds in place. So there'll be no need to actually transfer general fund to cover those expenditures. And the, the next item, the capital projects, it says funding is, is from a general fund subsidy and other project surpluses. What other project surpluses are we talking about? Have those been identified? The, from prior um, CIP projects, Councilman. So, for example, we had projects funded with a 2009 bond issuance. There generally are proceeds remaining when those projects are closed out. So we like to utilize uh, remaining proceeds or sources before we need to tap the general fund subsidy. So we anticipate being able to do that with this project also. And that's a common thing from year to year. Great. And, and just a general statement. Uh, thank you. A general well, statement on this. I'll be voting against mm -hmm. this. I do my position on the hotel, and the first item has to do with the county hotel. All right, any other questions or comments? All, right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Aye. Mr. Greenspan. All right. Item 13, consideration of counsel for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2013-0294, a resolution authorizing an economic development fund large-scale attraction loan in the amount not to exceed $805,000 to Remedy Senior Care of Ohio Northeast for relocation and expansion of a facility located at 26251 Bluestone Boulevard, Euclid, authorizing the Deputy Chief of Staff of Development or Director of Development to execute all documents consistent with said loan and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. On this matter goes to economic development. Resolution number 2014-0008, a resolution authorizing a payment in the amount of $350,000 to Land Studio Incorporated for operational support of the Group Plan Commission, authorizing the county executive to negotiate and execute any necessary contract or other documents for same, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This goes to council operations. Resolution number 2014-0009, a resolution authorizing a revenue generating utility agreement with City of Warrensville Heights for maintenance and repair of storm sewers, sanitary sewers, and water lines located in County Sewer District Number 5, authorizing the County Executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This goes to Public Works. Resolution number 2014-0010, a resolution authorizing an amendment to contract number CE10241 with Sterling Telecom Office Building, care of Colliers International, for lease of office space located at 1255 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, for the period September 1, 1998 through December 31, 2012, to extend the time period to December 31, 2015, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $490. $98,300.12, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Yeah, this goes, this goes to public works. Resolution number 2014-0011, a resolution authorizing an agreement with Cuyahoga County District Board of Health for participation in the Cuyahoga County Benefits Regionalization Program for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2016, authorizing the county executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, it goes to Human Resources. Resolution number 2014-0012, a resolution authorizing an agreement with City of Fairview Park for participation in the Cuyahoga County Benefits Regionalization Program for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2016, authorizing the County Executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. It goes to Human Resources. 
Resolution number 2014-0013, a resolution authorizing an agreement with Village of Walton Hills for participation in the Cuyahoga County Benefits Regionalization Program for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2016, authorizing the county executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, it goes to uh, Human Resources. Resolution number 2014-0014, resolution providing for adoption of various changes to the Cuyahoga County Non-Bargaining Classification Plan and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. This goes to Human Resources. Resolution number 2014-0015, a resolution approving the appropriation of funds for year 2014 based on the statement of appropriation status dated, dated December 31, 2013, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for free balances for grants and capital projects, encumbrances for grants and capital projects, and encumbrances for all other funds. Goes to finance and budget. Resolution number 2014-0016, a resolution authorizing an economic development fund loan in the amount not to exceed $2 million to High Point Realty 24755 LLC for purchasing and renovation of a facility located at 24755 High Point Drive, Beachwood, authorizing the Deputy Chief of Staff of Development or Director of Development to execute all documents consistent with said loan and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Goes to Economic Development. Resolution number 2014-0017. A resolution amending resolution number 2013-0073 dated April 9, 2013, which amended resolution number 2011-0293 dated October 25, 2011, which established a list of certified providers for occupational skills training services for the individual training account system for the period July 1, 2011 through June 30, 2014 to add various providers and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. The providers are listed as items K1 through 3. Uh, this goes to uh, education, environment, and sustainability. Resolution number 2014-0018, a resolution authorizing amendments to contracts with various providers for Workforce Investment Act in-school and out-of-school youth training for the period September 1, 2011 through June 30, 2013 to extend the time period to June 30, 2014 and for additional funds, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendments and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the contract numbers providers and in the amounts not to exceed is printed on the agenda items L1 and 2. Uh, this goes to um, education, environment, and sustainability. Resolution number 2014-0019, a resolution authorizing amendments to agreements and contracts with various providers for Workforce Investment Act in school and out of school youth training for the Connect the Dots program for the period September 1, 2011 through June 30, 2013 to extend the time period to June 30, 2014 and for additional funds, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendments and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the agreements and contract numbers providers and in the amounts not to exceed as printed on the agenda items M1 through 8. Uh, education, environment, and sustainability. Resolution number 2013-0020, resolution authorizing an amendment to master contract number CE 13268 for residential treatment services for the period February 1, 2013 through January 31, 2015 to change the total amount not to exceed from $2,250,000 to $3,850,000 to authorize funding decreases and or increases with various previously approved providers and to make awards on requisition number 28779 to additional providers for the period February 1, 2014 through January 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. The providers are listed on the agenda as items N1 through 6. It goes to public safety and justice affairs. 
Resolution number 2014-0021, a resolution authorizing an amendment to master contract number CE-1300-269 for residential treatment services for the Youth and Family Community Partnership Program for the period February 1, 2013 through January 31, 2015 to change the total amount not to exceed from $2,700,000 to $4,578,200 $277.50 and to authorize funding decreases and or increases with various previously approved providers, authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. It goes to Public Safety and Justice Affairs. Resolution number 2014-0022, a resolution making awards on requisition number 28083 to various providers for staff secure shelter care services for the period March 1, 2014 through February 29, 2016, authorizing the county executive to execute the contracts and all other documents consistent with said awards and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective with the providers and in the amounts not to exceed as printed on the agenda items P1 and 2. Uh, it goes to Public Safety Justice Affairs. Resolution number 2014-0023, a resolution authorizing various revenue generating agreements with Council for Economic Opportunities in Greater Cleveland for lease of space at various Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disability Centers for operation of Head Start programs for the period February 1, 2014 through January 31, 2017 authorizing the county executive to execute the agreements and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the facilities in the locations and in the amounts not to exceed as printed on the agenda items Q1 and 2. Um, goes to education, environment, and sustainability. Resolution number 2014-0024, resolution authorizing a contract with starting point in the amount not to exceed $1,241,864 for administration and coordination of the early care, education professional development, and teacher education and compensation helps professional development programs for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, education, Environment, Sustainability. Resolution number 2014-0025, a resolution authorizing a contract with starting point in the amount not to exceed $3,967,986 for administration of the Special Needs Child Care Program for the Invest in Children Program for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. It goes to education, environment, and sustainability. Resolution number 2014-0026, a resolution authorizing a contract with starting point in the amount not to exceed $3,549,202 for administration of the Family Child Care Home Regional System for the Invest in Children program for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution Resolution become immediately effective. It goes to education, environment, and sustainability. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers has served ably as chair of this committee, and we've referred a number of items um, this evening uh, to the committee. And uh, Ms. Simon has graciously um, um, accepted the um, chairmanship of this committee. Um, so I'm not sure when you all want to make this transition, since you might want to have Ms. Simon act as chairman, you know, if, if we have to have these meetings right away so that she can get started and because and, and, she'll probably be here when they're actually passed. So the two of you can work that out. And if you are not around, we can have someone fill in your committee. You know, you're, you'll be here. Okay, all right. Just trying to make this transition easy. Okay. All right, item 14, committee reports and consideration of resolution for second reading adoption and suspension of rules. These items have been to committee, but we need a motion pursuant to Rule 9D to waive the third readings. 
A uh, motion to suspend the rule. Second. Moved by Mr. Gallagher and, sec and seconded by Mr. Jimenez to suspend Rule 9D. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Resolution number 2013-0289, a resolution amending resolution number 2012-0025, dated April 10, 2012, which declared that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of Turney Road by changing the termini from Slayton Avenue to Hathaway Road in the city of Garfield Heights to Warner Road to Hathaway Road in the cities of Cleveland and Garfield Heights by changing the total estimated project cost from $4,125,000 to $4,925,000 and by authorizing the county executive to enter into an agreement of cooperation with the city of Cleveland and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately ef effective. Move to adopt. Moved by Mr. Jones and seconded by Mr. Germana. Your committee really worked hard, Mr. Jones. You got a lot of items on here. So uh, I read brief you for each one. Yeah, Madam President, this is an amendment to our, our resurfacing of Turney Road in Garfield Heights. Um, a little in the neighborhood of half of a mile of a mile of Turney Road extends into the city of Cleveland. So, so we are amending to incorporate this. It, it just makes sense to complete this portion. The city of Cleveland has uh, has made the request, and uh, our administration uh, sees it as a sensible uh, project. So, uh, again, I ask my colleagues to support this um, uh, resurfacing project. Yeah, isn't this a place where there'd be like a fixed road and half a mile without it, and then we'd pick back up again if we didn't do this? It's an example of the road crossing city boundaries, and it's an example where we can uh, work across the city lines to, 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 to complete one uh, road project. Okay, any questions on that? All right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Resolution number 2013-0290, a resolution declaring that public convenience and welfare requires resurfacing of East 222nd Street from Tungsten Road to Euclid Avenue in the city of Euclid. Total estimated project cost $3,260,200. Finding that special assessments will neither be levied nor collected to pay for any part of the county's costs of said improvement, authorizing the county executive to enter into an agreement of cooperation with said municipality in connection with said project, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. And move to adopt. Second. Moved by Mr. Jones and seconded by Ms. Conwell. And Madam President, again, another example, the city has approached the county regarding this resurfacing project. The conditions warranted it was last resurfaced in 94, so it's reached its useful life. So I ask my colleagues to support this uh, resurfacing project. Madam, Madam President, I'd like my name added. Is Simon's name, please? Uh, and please add my name to all, all these road projects. Uh, you're already on there, I think. Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution number 2013-0291, a resolution authorizing the appropriation of real property in connection with right-of-way plans as set forth in plat number M4985 for improvement of Pleasant Valley Road, Bagley Road, from Pearl Road to York Road in the cities of Middleburg Heights and Parma. Directing the county executive to proceed with the acquisition of real property required for public highway purposes, authorizing the fiscal officer to issue the monetary warrant to be deposited with the probate court of Cuyahoga County in an amount that is equal to the fair market value of the property and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the properties as printed on the agenda, items C1 through 9. <coughs> by Mr. Germana and seconded by Mr. Miller. Any discussion on these items? Uh, Madam President, uh, this, uh, the, the appropriation of this real property uh, amounts to about 5% of the unsettled agreements. And, uh, and, that, and can I ask my colleagues to support this resolution? All right, uh, any other questions, comments? All, right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Resolution number 2013-0292, a resolution making an award on requisition number 25834 to Sheridan Plaza in the amount of $534,500.40 
for lease of space for auto title regional office west located at 27029 Brook Park Extension Road, North Olmsted for the period December 1, 2013 through November 30, 2018, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. By Ms. Conwell. And Madam President, by, by leasing space in North Olmstead, this keeps our auto title uh, facility closer to the Board of um, Bureau of Motor Vehicles. It's a five year extension with a county option. And, and this lease is uh, less expensive than our previous lease. So I do ask my colleagues to support this uh, resolution. Are there any questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Jones, if I may clarify, um, are you wanting to be a sponsor on this item as well or just the road projects? Yes. Thank you. Resolution number 2013-0293, a resolution making an award on requisition number 28684 to Reliastar Life Insurance Company, doing business as ING Employee Benefits, in the amount not to exceed $2,091,441 for stop loss insurance services for county employees and their eligible dependents for the period January 1, 2014 through December 31, 2014 authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Moved by Ms. Conwell and seconded by Mr. Miller. Did you want to be heard on this, Ms. Conwell, from your committee? Yes, Madam Chair, um, the stop loss insurance, as, if, uh, as my colleagues know, is done on an annual basis. Um, the only difference with this contract this year is we are actually going with the new vendor, Relistar, instead of Sun Life um, for cost savings to the county. Uh, it gave a better price for uh, medical as well as prescription drugs. That's about a 275000 per employee. And beyond that, um, that's when the stop loss insurance um, kicks in. So I ask my uh, colleagues to support this. All right, any questions? All right, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution number 2013-0295, a resolution authorizing an economic development fund loan in the amount not to exceed $1,280,000 to SWP acquisition for purchase and renovation of a facility located at 3750 Park East Drive, Beachwood, authorizing the Deputy Chief of Staff of Development or Director of Development to execute all documents consistent with said loan and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Moved by Mr. Schron and seconded by Mr. Rogers. You want to be heard, Mr. Schron? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the uh, uh, in, in this particular case, what we're looking at is, is job growth and job retention, and it's going into an area uh, of a building that uh, has not been uh, fully utilized. It's going to be exciting because they're going to be able to use the top build portion of it, uh, buy the entire rest of it. It will be able to grow. And uh, this is one of the fastest growing investment firms uh, in the area, and they've expanded throughout not only the area, but also outside of uh, Northeastern Ohio. So uh, it's a, an excellent example of, of a st uh, startup business that's grown here and uh, has decided to plant its roots here when it could have just very easily moved to the West Coast or the East Coast where the financial communities are. And ask everybody to support this. Thank you, Mr. Sean. Any other questions? All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution number 2013-0296, a resolution authorizing amendments to contracts with various providers for comprehensive case management, direct and referral services for the fiscal year 2012 Second Chance Act Adult Offender Reentry Program for the period October 1, 2012 through September 30, 2013 to extend the time period to September 30, 2014 authorizing the county executive to execute the amendments and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the contracts, providers, and in the amounts not, not to exceed or for no additional funds as printed on the agenda items G1 and 2. 
Mr. Brady and seconded by Mr. Miller. Did you want to be heard, Mr. Brady? Uh, these are just some adjustments in the contract for the reentry program. Uh, in three cases, it's additional funding, and um, in one, it's not. Right, thank you. Any uh, other discussion? Yeah, Madam President. Yes, Mr. Um, Winston. Uh, once again, I might have a question for Mr. Rubino. During committee, I had asked a question regarding the use of health and human service levy funds to determine if they were a use of the reserves or if these funds were encumbered, reserved and encumbered from the previous year. And uh, an answer was supposed to be provided prior to the vote today. Councilman Greenspan, I believe I. I'm sorry. I think I answered that question in committee yesterday. That was the two, we're talking about the $250,000 item. 250, right. 150 was in our projection for 13. Didn't end up happening in 13. So we'd already accounted for that draw in 13. So the remaining 100 would have been our projected use reserve. Okay. So that, I guess the answer is the net that 100,000 is what additional use reserve um, for that item. Okay, all right, great. And the reason I bring this up is just, I'm gonna pay keen attention to the, our use of reserves until we get the financial policy adopted, which has a reporting requirement of such. And I just wanted to make sure that we are clear as to what is transferred over from the previous year as an encumbrance and which is the use of current year reserve dollars. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution number 2013-0297, a resolution authorizing amendments to various agreements with Cleveland Municipal School District for universal pre-kindergarten services for the period August 22, 2012 through uh, July 31, 2013 to extend the time period to July 31, 2014 Four. and for additional funds. Authorizing the county executive to execute the amendments and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the agreements, the providers, and in the amounts not to exceed as printed on the agenda items H1 and 2. Move to adopt. Second. Moved by Mr. Rogers and seconded by Ms. Simon. Madam President, this is the final contract that we'll see this year on the Universal Pre K program. The city. Uh, the Cleveland Municipal School District operates, um, they house two universal pre-K programs, um, Tremont and Marion Sterling Elementary Schools, and it took a little while to get through the whole uh, school district process in order for this to get to us. That's why it's coming not as a group with the, with the rest as they did in a few meetings ago. So I ask for your support of this. Are there any questions, comments? My name, Ed. Add Ms. Conwell's name, please. My name as well. Madam Chair, mine as well. Mr. Jones, add my name, please, also. Okay, did we vote on this? No. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Item 15. Um, Consideration of an ordinance for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2014-0002, an ordinance amending Cuyahoga County Code Chapter 503, Small Business Enterprise Program Policies and Procedures, to approve revised Cuyahoga County Small Business Enterprise Program Policies and Procedures, effective February 15, 2014, and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. Now this matter goes to Public Works. Um, are there, item 16, are there any miscellaneous committee reports anyone would like to offer? Mr. Greenspan? Thank you, Madam President. Just a uh, reminder to my committee and a reminder to the, my colleagues, uh, January 27th at 9 a.m. we'll have a Council Operations Committee meeting at which time we'll discuss the two items referred uh, in today's agenda and also continue our discussion on the possible charter amendment for the Sheriff's Department, uh, for the Sheriff, and then also if there are other um, proposed charter amendments that members would like discussed in committee, please submit them and we'll put them on the agenda. We'll be having committee meetings uh, twice a month from now until uh, we're able to work through the uh, load of proposed charter amendments. And I, I was at that meeting, I'm on that committee, and it was a very um, meaningful discussion, and I think we encourage people from the public, if they have opinions, to, to come in and offer them. Anybody else? Mr. Ma Miller? Madam President, my colleagues, uh, the Finance and Budget Committee will meet at a special time. We needed to uh, 
relinquish the plan meeting on the 21st to facilitate the discussion on the syntax. So uh, we're going to meet on Thursday, January the 23rd at 12.30 p.m., the, uh, an hour and a half before the uh, if needed, which I think is going to be needed, second meeting on, uh, at 2 o'clock on that day. And at that meeting, we'll hear the two resolutions that were introduced today and also have some discussion about uh, late tax bills and how to correct that situation. Thank you. Yes, that will be a hot topic, late tax bills. Anyone else? Um, Brady? Madam Chairperson, the Health and Human Services Committee will meet at um, 1 o'clock on the 22nd. Um, we um, have a large contract that we held on to uh, in the last meeting uh, to get some little further um, clarification, and we're going to meet to take another look at that uh, on the 21st, 22nd. Anyone else? Ms. Conwell? Yes, Madam Chair, the Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee um, will try and tackle all of this agenda on Tuesday, January 21st at uh, regular time, 10 a.m. Madam President, the Public Works Committee will meet on Wednesday, January 22nd to deal with the items referred today at 11 a.m. Thank you. Education, Environment, and Sustainability will meet January 22nd at 3 o'clock to go over the items that were referred to committee today. All right. Is anyone, um, any miscellaneous business? Any um, public comment unrelated to the agenda? No, Madam Chair, no public comment. Um, and um, I think the clerk has item 19. Do you want to uh, go with them? Madam At Chair? the request of the uh, department, uh, we are withdrawing this legislation, and its replacement legislation was just uh, introduced as resolution number 2014-0014. Um, this item was changed from being an ordinance in, contained in the county code to now uh, coming before council as resolutions whenever uh, there are necessary changes for the non-bargaining classification plan. Now, we have uh, the listings of upcoming meetings listed on the agenda. So we have uh, January the 21st is a Committee of the Whole at um, starting at 3 o'clock. A special meeting on the 21st, a Committee of the Whole if needed on the 23rd at 2 o'clock, um, also on the 28th at 3.30. And we reserve the right to, and also a regular meeting on January the 28th, and also we reserve the right that we may have some other special meetings on the um, uh, syntax issue because it is such an important issue and we want to have, make sure that all sides are, are heard. So um, anytime there's a special meeting, we do post that on the um, website. And uh, this is our first meeting of the year and we have done it in 55 minutes. Mm -hmm. Else for the good of the order? Do we? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Stand adjourned.